Um, so we'll now, um, so now not in this um, folder, but now we want the collaborator to pull the changes that have been done um, by the owner. So the owner is the person in the partnership or pairing who's now resolved the merge conflict. So we'd now like the collaborator. So for me, in my example, that's going to be Bjorn, my alter ego. Um, Bjorn's uh, planet. So yep, now we're in Bjorn's planets, collaborator's repository, not the owner. Um, and I now want to pull Jordan's, um, Jordan's uh, merge resolution there that he pushed to the remote repository into my local repository. And we can see um, the insertion of that line that Jordan did. Um, and we have looked like we have a successful uh, merge conflict resolution here. And I'll just double check in the collaborators folder that in fact, the file is looking um, like it has integrity now and is what we want. Um, so we've successfully resolved a merge conflict, um, which, which can happen a lot of the time when you have um, multiple people collaborating on a project, um, editing the same line at the same time and push um, content at the same time as another collaborator. So it's something that you may come across and it's, it's great to introduce you to this even if you may not necessarily experience this in the next couple of weeks. Um, I think now would be a good time for us uh, to move into seeing how this would be applied to um, the Zeus, to Zeus on the supercomputer. So how we'd interact with our um, Pawsey systems and our local. So we're going to do an exercise in that. I'm just going to check the chat. I see there's been a couple of messages. Just make sure everybody's up to speed. Um, Jake, did you have your question answered there? Yeah, that's all good. Thanks. Okay, perfect. All right. So <clears throat> um, conflicts occur when two or more people change the same lines in the same file and the version control system um, does not allow people to override each other's changes blindly, but highlights the conflicts so that they can be resolved. So you can go into the file and edit it and, and um, create or, or change um, the contents to what you um, and your collaborator are were intending. So we'll now exit out of this one. Um, exit out of 15. So we're now going to go to um, section 15. Um, you will need your, um, you will need your access from yesterday. So I'm gonna post that into the chat. So I posted in your um, access for Zeus, et cetera, into the chat, the Google doc that we used yesterday when we set up um, in the introduction to computing um, seminar. And we're going to be working on section 15 here, introduction to Pawsey project application. So how can I apply version control to file transfer, version control file management between my local and Pawsey systems? Um, and so you can understand how to apply this and why you would want to use it for your project. So we will get started there. Um, so I'm going to clear, I'm going to go into my home directory um, and I'm going to SSH um, into Aussie systems. Uh, I'm going to go into Zeus for this example, because I think we were using Zeus in the, um, session yesterday if i'm not mistaken mistaken ssh zeus or the one wherever you the system you used when you um 
cloned the introduction to supercomputing a repository from GitHub with um, the instructor yesterday. And then you'll need to enter in password. Um, if you've forgotten how to um, get to this point, please um, contact us in the chat or let us know. Um, I'm going to CD into my scratch, which is the file system where I stored um, the introduction to supercomputing or cloned the repository. Let's type in list and I should see, um, this should be the output that I'm seeing now, the introductory introductory supercomputing folder. So I'm going to CD into there. I'm going to start typing and just press tab and enter. Um, I want to um, I want to set up uh, a um, empty repository on my GitHub. Um, so I'm going to open up GitHub browser. I'm going to go into home. I'm going to create, and I, everybody, if you could follow along and do this as well, we'll create an empty repository where we're going to um, take in the um, files from the repository we cloned yesterday. So yesterday we cloned this repository into Scratch, my Scratch, um, and now we're going to push this to our own private remote repository on GitHub. So we will go into GitHub. We're going to do new again on repositories on left on in the home page of GitHub. Click on new. Um, I think we will name this test VC. Um, and we lastly will make this a private repository. So only we can see and commit to this repository. And we won't check any of these boxes. We will click create repository. Um, and now the main thing we're going to need is the um, link here. I'm going to do SSH in, uh, in Zeus. Um, and hopefully everybody is able to do SSH in, the, um, in their account on Zeus. Um, if not, um, please contact one of us. Please contact Melissa or Edric. But we will all, I'll assume everybody's going to attempt um, SSH. Um, on Zeus right now. So open up the terminal again where we are logged into Zeus. Um, and we're going to um, change the um, origin from the Pawsey a remote repository to our own private um, uh, GitHub repository. So to do this, I'm just going to Remove origin, I'm going to inspect that that was successful. So there's no output, which is what we're interested in. Then I'm going to add my remote repository, empty private repository from GitHub using the SSH um, tab, copy that, paste into the terminal, press enter. Then I'm going to um, inspect or double check that that was successful. And now I can see that we will push and fetch um, from the GitHub account, the GitHub remote repository that we created. So you'll see your own username here. You'll see, and you should see test VC if you use that naming convention for the repository.git. Okay, so I'm just going to check all the components here that we have. Looks good to me. Um, and so now I'm going to add everything, all the files that aren't included in this git ignore. So git add everything. Um, and I'm going to, this is technically the first commit to my private remote re repository. So that will be my message. 
And this is important to do, make sure the naming convention is set to main. Now we're going to um, generate our private public key pair on Zeus. Make sure you enter the um, email account associated to your GitHub account. So I've got SSH dash key gen space dash T space ed 25519 space dash C space and my um, GitHub email from my account. So now we get these two lines generating public private ed 2559 key pair. And we want to press enter at this point so that we get the default um, tilde slash dot SSH um, convention. Um, I'm gonna use a passphrase again. Um, be sure to note it down for SSH. Enter the exact same passphrase again. And you should see this um, random art um, produced when you press enter after those two correct entries. I'll pause now. Um, if anyone is stuck or has something different or has getting an error issue, please speak up or post in the chat. I'm just gonna open up. Okay, I'm just looking at the chat. Looks like everything's good. Okay, great. Was is everybody on track? Okay, great. So now we're going to inspect the contents um, of the key we created. So we can press cat there. Jordan, um, you got asked to maybe wait a few minutes, like a minute or something, for people to catch up, if yeah, that's sure. OK. Sure. Absolutely. Um, if yeah, if you were if you're using um, something other than Zeus, that's fine. Um, I was just using Zeus as I. That's the um, supercomputer. I think the instructor was using yesterday when we did the Git clone. Um, and so, if you've needed to clone the repository um, today, that's also fine. That's no issue. How are you going, Aiden? Okay, a couple, wait a bit more. So is, every, is SSH working for everyone on the Pawsey systems? Um, is it, and there's been no need for PAT or anything like that at this point. Great. So this is something you could do um, when you begin working on your project to sort to link up the supercomputing system that you're going to be working on to your local and you'll have this you'll have the skills that we've introduced today you might be really familiar with github and git already but now you'll be able to um, connect and link up changes you make on your local system when you're working on your local system um, to the remote 
really quickly. And also, um, if you want to go back versions, um, something ch something changes over a couple of days and you're not happy with the changes and you want to go back to a previous version of the file, that's where GitHub is really powerful at versus, say, um, overwriting or um, creating um, different naming conventions of files to track versions. Um, and so that's that's why uh, one of the reasons we we advocate for version control. So Ivan, okay, great. Great, so we had some um, PAT and HTTPS access there, which is great. As long as it's all working, that's what we are um, mostly concerned with. Ah, uh, yes, so um, if you would, yeah, so as agent showing, if you would like, um, to do the whole GIMP config setup um, on your Pausy system. You can follow um, the instructions that Melissa went on very early on in, went over very early on in um, the earlier sections of this tutorial, um, but it's not necessary or a requirement to continue on with section 15 here. So aside from that um, most recent comment, Yes, Aiden, I don't think that um, that's an error that could uh, keep you from uh, continuing on. I think that's more of a um, notification or alert for setting up um, your configuration. Okay, great. Are you all up, up to speed now? Is everybody up to speed with? Okay, great. I will continue on. So I think now we are going to confirm um, our authentication. Uh, that was is successful, so we will Type in the following command. Ah, that's no good. Is anyone else seeing the same? Ah, yes, sorry. We have forgotten a step here. So we need to, um, we need to, copy and paste this as we did before um, into our GitHub uh, browser settings. So we will go to, I think it's settings here. Nope. Main, go into the main right here on your icon on GitHub, click settings, click SSH and GPG keys. Then click new SSH key. Um, our title, we can say this is Zeus access um, key. And um, so we need to have copied from the terminal the output from this command. Um, so we will copy that, our public key, and paste that in here, and once this is pasted in here, click add SSH key, and you should see a second SSH key from the one we created earlier, if SSH is what you used. Um, we'll have to check in with um, the person who used or is using and any other individuals who are using um, PAT and see how you're going. Um, for now, if we go back to the terminal, um, and we do SSH T git at github.com. It should authenticate now. Enter a passphrase. Um, create a passphrase here. 
lockdown. Um, or we, sorry, the created past phrase that we've noted down, enter that. And um, you should get this uh, successful authentication output line. Um, please let us know if you have not been able to get to this point. Um, I'm very interested to see how we went with PAT to here. If, if you've had success or if you haven't, please, um, please let us know. Um, so Sean, I just replied to you in the chat there. Hopefully that solves your issue. Awesome. Okay, now we will try um, push what we've committed to our local repository across to our empty GitHub repository um, and see how we go. Prompting me for my pass phrase. And we have now successfully taken um, an, ex an existing um, folder or directory that we have in um, on Zeus or on Topaz. Um, and then we've now pushed it to a private remote repository that we have out in GitHub. And the final step we can do is we can then clone um we can then clone that private repository to our local system and then we have those two um, synced up where we can constantly pull and push depending on which workstation we're at um, and keep our work up to date and sit all synced up together so um, i've just included um, some other steps um, that i've used in, when i'm collaborating with other people or even when i'm working on um, two different workstations. Um, if I make a change, if I make a change on my local here, so um, let's say, um, let's say two people are collaborating um, and I've made a change in this repository, in this local, on my local and I want to push it to my local repository, I'm going to, what files do we have in here? Um, let's, let's add a file. So nano, hopefully nano is workable here. Test.txt. Okay, so we don't have nano on um, Zeus, it looks like. I wonder if they have Vim. Okay, so we have Vim. So I'll just quickly, so enter in Vim test.txt. Once you're in this window, um, you need to press I on your keyboard until you see insert here on the bottom. Um, then you can write something. You can write something. Hello world. Um, and then press escape then press, um, type in um, semicolon, then W, and you should start to see it pop up down here. So semicolon, W, Q, exclamation mark. And that should save and exit you out of Vim successfully. Um, and we won't touch Vim again, we've been using Nano, but on, the Pawsey system for text editor, we have Vim here. So that's a quick introduction to Vim. Press enter and we're out of Vim successfully. Was everybody able to get in and out of Vim? Ah, there we go. I see that Nano is available as a module through Pawsey's package manager, Mali. So you are able to use um, Nano throughout your projects. You just, I believe you'll need to do something like module load Mali, um, and then you can begin to use Nano as far as I'm aware. Okay. 
Okay, so we've done the test.txt uh, file. Now we're going to add it to the staging area. Oh, sorry, we were going to um, we we're going to use this little workflow that I have here at the bottom. This is sort of my six commands for collaborating with people and managing workflow. Um, so I'll dash what I've done here and basically what I've done, um, the changes I've made uh, is just the TST, T-E-S-T dot T-X-T file. So I'm gonna stash that. I'm going to pull, which there won't be any changes um, because from our remote repository, um, we haven't done any pushes from anywhere else. Um, but if you're working with a collaborating partner, that might have been the case. Um, so I'm going to pull. Already up to date. Um, stash apply. This is going to merge uh, my local changes with the most recent code from the remote repository. Um, no need to stash anything. Um, git add. Now we're going to add to the staging area. Git commit. M trialing six commands for um, collaborating. See, we're adding the TXT now, and then I'm just going to push this to um, repository. And when I collaborate, um, my most recent project uh, was with a team of about seven. And once I had um, my local repository set up, um, these are almost a majority um, of the commands that I use when I'm constantly working on a project such as the one I was working on with the seven people. And I found it was really effective for avoiding conflicts. Um, easily mer merging changes and um, keeping a really easy and efficient workflow. So this is probably my favorite way um, of working on collaborative projects. Um, but that basically is how we've gotten uh, a um, repository, local repository set up on the Pawsey systems. And now we can go into uh, our GitHub browser. And we should see the test VC repository populated with the files from Zeus or Topaz or what have you now. So whatever work we've been doing on Zeus, we now have it on a remote repository on GitHub. Um, that was previously empty. Now we've got that set up. Now we could go in and clone this down to our local um, using the same procedure of HTTPS or SSH, whichever one we used from the um, version control section seven, I believe it was, remotes. Yes, so from section seven, we can continue on from there um, and add that to our local machine. So that we then have a local repository set up and we can work from there. Um, does anyone have any questions? All right, that concludes the majority of the content that I wanted to cover um, today. Um, Edric or Melissa, do you have anything to add? No, I think that's it. I think it's a lot to take in. So I think you guys might go better with it once you walk through it in your own time after the session and maybe rewatch some of the parts of the recording. But yeah, I think not. 
that many of you will have to collab collaborate. And I think that's the most complicated part about using Git, but actually also a beautiful part about using Git because it makes it possible to do that. I don't think you want to collaborate on a Word document. <laughs> I think that would actually get much more messy. But yeah, and if you have any questions once you get started with Git and you run into projects, I think you can reach out to any of the three of us if you run into any problems. But yeah, don't okay. give up on Git. I think you can go pretty far with like five commands. I just wanted to add that um, there's a, there is a GitHub um, a GUI program, uh, which you can I think you can get for at least Windows and Mac. Um, personally, I, I find using um, Git on the command line to be um, simpler in my case, because as Melissa said, you can get by just about everything, with, you know, just those five commands. Um, but if that's your preferred way of operation, you can um, download that. Also, most software um, IDEs, so your you know, Visual Studios uh, or um, Spider or um, what is the name of that Python IDE? PyCharm. PyCharm. Thanks, Jordan. They all have uh, uh, Git integration. So that's a, another approach you can take. But I would yeah, just strongly, strongly encourage you to start using version control over your project. You will make a mistake, something will go wrong. And the last thing you want to, you know, be is someone who's awake at three in the morning wondering what particular line you changed where and you know when did you do it. Um, also, you know, you working on a Unix system where RM deletes things permanently. I have you know, I have written, you know, RM star while I've been working, you know, again, late and just completely, you know, nuked my current directory. If you're using Git and if you're backing it up remotely, you just know that no matter what, your work is there and you can always reproduce all of the results that you've worked so hard for. And that's, that's really it. Um, Ah, pleased to hear that um, you find the GitHub desktop app to be um, useful, Jintao. And I think yeah, Melissa mentioned that she's um, happy to run through the Windows Credential Manager as well. So I think that's all of it from me. Uh, Yeah, I guess if there, I might maybe wait a bit if there are any further questions and otherwise those who are interested in the credential manager, maybe just stick along. I also put a link for the Mac credential manager. I think I'll just set it up on Keychain in the Word document, um, which I posted. But, and then you, it's like originally from GitHub, so you can just try to follow those instructions. And maybe if you have any problems, maybe reach out to Jordan. I think he has a Mac himself. <laughs> Might be yeah. the easiest. Yes, good starting point for Mac users is me, probably. I think uh, Aiden uh, asked if we could um, show how to add the um, I flag to RM. So uh, I think just before we go, if someone wanted to run through how to set that up as an alias, maybe in Bash RC. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Jordan, would you like to run through that? Yeah. Um, I'm I think I might stop the recording. Yes. I think it might be good for everyone.